the Denver Broncos just stole the top rated rookie running back uh, who was still a free agent after the NFL draft all played out. Uh, even outside of Broncos country, people are saying he is going to be the steal of this undrafted rookie class. Each year we see an undrafted rookie make a run uh, and get playing time and like stay on a team for a long time. And I think we just nabbed that guy. Uh, we are also bringing in a Division Two Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. There's Cortland Sutton rumors. There's so much going on right now. We're going to break it all down and more in this video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I break down all things Denver Broncos, and I love having you all around for the ride. So we're we're going to dive in. Uh, I had a friend who was really early on the Bitcoin train and he got like Dogecoin before it went to the moon and he convinced me to buy it at like 66 cents and then I lost all my family's money. So that all aside, like I think that he must feel how I feel every time I like check my phone and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's incredible news. Like Sean Payton, uh, like he's like being early on this cryptocurrency run. And I feel like he is just hitting banger after banger after banger. And he continued to do it uh, even just this week as now the NFL draft has played out. And a lot of guys whose name probably should have been called in the draft, they get calls up from all these teams who want their services and say, hey, you're on our board. But, you know, we went elsewhere. Come play for us. And because the Denver Broncos have a long storied history of those guys not just making the team, but helping that team make it to playoffs and beyond as we've broken down. They choose the Denver Broncos, and the highest rated running back on that entire list was your man right here, our man, who I think is an incredible change of pace back for Audric Estime. I think this guy is going to be nasty, nasty. Uh, we're going to look at some of his film and about him, but we are looking here at Blake Watson, who played running back um, for a couple different schools, but most recently for Memphis, where he averaged six yards a carry. Now, Memphis isn't an Alabama or like a, a major, major program, although a lot of great players come out of Memphis. So to average six yards a carry, like that's crazy. He is... Uh, he is more solidly built. Like we know Jaleel McLaughlin had a crazy acceleration and burst that just felt like just a total difference. Like when you watched him run versus watching Javante Williams run. So this guy is actually faster uh, than, than Jaleel McLaughlin. He ran a faster 40 time, yet he is way more stout and can do a lot more in the pass block than Jaleel could. One of the big things on Jaleel was he never could figure out that pass blocking. He was a much more svelte and he was built like your boy Ben on Sports Talk Denver. Like he couldn't pick up the pass block. So he was fast, but he couldn't do much uh, in the pass block. So every time he was in, you knew it was a run to him. And so they would stack the box when he was in. It was already a stacked box because of uh, we, who we had playing quarterback. But man, watching some of these highlights. And so here is an outside of Denver source right here from The Athletic. And he ranked all of his top undrafted um, guys who didn't get drafted and where they would go. And look right here, his top rated running back was Blake Watson. Where did he sign? With the Denver Broncos. Uh, and just you can't help but watch this highlight here and the next one and not hear Chris Berman's voice kind of narrating it. So uh, you just look right there. That's not much of a hole whatsoever, right? I guess you could, you, like, you're going to see where he's going to go. But watch all the dudes he makes miss. And you just hear, boop, right there. And again, boop, like, just shifty and like he, the difference between, you know, Audric Estime would have r run those dudes over. He's he's the guy we broke down a couple of days ago whose shoulders have shoulders. So you see here, I think he's, um, Blake Watson is a buck 90. And so he's fast, yet he also can, can break tackles. And then the big difference here, um, and this is when he played with Old Dominion, was that he also has like the breakaway speed that uh, we don't necessarily see. That's the knock on Audric Estime was that like he was really good in the hole and like playing through contact, but he didn't have the 40 time that like once he broke into the open field, he wasn't finishing. Um, but man, check out the breakaway speed now um, right here. We're going to play it for us. Um, so again, you're, you're seeing a muddy pocket there. Um, but, I mean, just watching this breakaway speed, this was his third touchdown on 19 carries. So to have 19 carries and three of them all the way for touchdown, breaking school records there, and you're just watching, um, man, boom, this guy, like, in the open field, and he's gone, and he, he just finishes it. So really, really excited about that. And, again, just looking here, his 40, 40 time was a sub-4, 440. And if you look at, like, Jaleel, um, 
Jaleel McLaughlin's 40 time was a 4440. So just, you know, obviously the naked eye wouldn't pick that up, but you just look at the difference that you're talking a 5'7 back who is smaller built versus um, very, very high on Watson, which has me um, looking at this article here on Predominantly Orange, which really broke down who are the winners and losers of draft day. Um, I think training camp is going to be more interesting than ever because we have talent on this team now. And so we're going to see players cut and then picked up from the Broncos. And that is something that has just not happened in a long time. And you can tell the depth of your squad by how many of your, your players who are cut are then scooped off and people are like, Oh, I was hoping that was going to fall. And I can't remember the last time we had a player that we cut who then went on to meaningfully play somewhere else. But if you look at our running back room now with Watson, Estime, Samaj P. Ryan, obviously we got Javante, um, that's four guys. And then we also, we know that it's really important to Sean Payton to have a fullback. So like, are we carrying five guys onto our, um, onto our actual active roster? So, you know, that's why one of the losers of the draft, which really is a win for us as Broncos fans. Um, but one of the losers of the draft was the running back room, because I think we're, it's very, very likely that we are going to have a good player from the running back room get cut and then you know they're going to get scooped up somewhere else uh, other losers that they said on our um, from our again uh, anytime you have a loser from the draft it's a winner for us because that just means we've added talent and I love that and so I think um, what are we going to be doing at interior defensive line and you know we looked that we were able to make a trade with the Jets which I'm going to do a whole nother video on that um, I just find it very very interesting that all the haters on Sean Payton, right? They hated like no other coach would have someone open up Russell Wilson's contract. Well, then you see how many people on the Raiders were asked to open their contract, how many people on the Chargers were asked to open up their contract. We saw, uh, obviously, Patrick Mahomes was even asked to open up his contract. So all the haters on Sean Payton for that were wrong. The other hate was people were saying like, oh, how Sean Payton talked about Nathaniel Hackett. No other coach would do that, and that will just sever our relationship with the Jets. And then you look at the biggest trades of this offseason for us were two trades with the Jets to get Zach Wilson uh, here and then also to make the, the massive trade to get a starting, like a longtime starter in John Franklin Myers who is going to start for this team. Um, so the other thing that we're going to have to kind of finesse is what is going to happen at interior defensive line with knowing that we got Malcolm Roach in free agency who pro football focus had as their top rated interior defensive lineman for stopping the run. Um, obviously, you know, we picked up Angelo Blackson and I'm very, very excited about that room. And it's just amazing to have talent now to have to have make those tough decisions of letting guys go who are actually good enough to play, uh, play for, any team in the league. And that's cool. Uh, so the other losers they said were, uh, the wide receiver room. So obviously we're all like, so, so hyped that we were able to get, uh, Troy Franklin when, you know, there was times when I was watching football this year when Troy Frank Franklin was talked about, you know, mid season with the Oregon ducks as being a first round draft pick. So to have him fall all the way to four with us, uh, to then have Tim Patrick coming back and, Tim Patrick's just the ultimate locker room guy has, you know, was on the sideline rehabbing and stuck it out through, you know, all of the stuff he he's been here for multiple coaches and has just had, you know, horrible injury luck, but uh, you know, Jerry Judy's gone, but really now with Vele, who we got out of Utah, I think our receiver room is now stacked. We're going to have to make difficult decisions at the, at the receiver room because you can't carry five running backs and all the receivers that you really, if you go through and break all these receivers down. So you hope a couple of, you know, can Vele fall to our practice squad, like hopefully, but uh, there's a lot of people who are high on him. And, and so that's going to be really, really interesting to see how that plays out. Then the other thing I'm crazy. In, oh, um, so with this stacked wide receiver room now, um, the fact that we got Reynolds to replace Jerry Judy, we got Patrick coming back. We got Franklin, and now we know, like, Marvin Mims, I think all of us know that his ceiling is Tyreek Hill level ceiling, and obviously that's a stretch, but he made the Pro Bowl as a rookie. We saw his explosiveness, and the only limit on him was the number of catches he got because uh, of having to give the ball to a first-round pick in Jerry Judy. So I'm really, really high on this receiver room as well. Um, so that brings up a lot of rumors about Cortland Sutton. 
Um, there are Broncos sources saying like everything's good with Cortland. He's going to be back. And then there are Antonio Brown and a lot of other people in the league saying there's a deal in place with the Pittsburgh Steelers to trade Cortland Sutton. Um, you know, there's Antonio Brown, but then other more connected sources, Benjamin Albright last night tweeted a reunited and it feels so good tweet, uh, like a meme kind of alluding to the fact that Russell Wilson and Cortland Sutton were going to be reunited. I think the Denver Broncos are in win now mode. We're not rebuilding. We're not going to only win five games next year. So I think it is really important that if we trade Cortland Sutton, it's not for draft picks. We, we trade him for a position of need and we trade him for someone who can step in and play right away. And that's a fun place to be in that we're not trying to bottom out. There's no purpose in bottoming out and every move the Broncos have made in free agency in the draft, we're all about winning now. And that makes me really, really excited. So then the thing about finessing and like, how are we going to thread this needle of uh, keeping guys we want to keep and developing the players we do have developed, but yet also um, letting Sean Payton have as many rods in the water as he can. The thing I'm really curious about is what are we going to do in our quarterback room? Uh, we got Danucci, Jared Stidham, Zach Wilson, and obviously Bo Nix. And then the, the other crazy news of the day was that the Denver Broncos are also inviting in John Matocha, Matoka, Matoka, uh, which like, is that the sickest picture ever? Like that's, that's my quarterback right there doing backflips without a helmet. Uh, but yeah, division two winner from school minds, you know, school minds is a really fun thing to watch. I got to watch a game there when I was living in Colorado and this guy lit it up in D two football and just seems like a, a gamer and a winner. So I'm very curious, how is our um, quarterback room going to play out? We just uh, denied Zach Wilson's fifth year option. And so really maybe all of our poker chips are in on uh, Bo Nix and that we have no intention of giving equal snaps at training camp or rookie mini camp to Zach Wilson. And that truly we only signed him in case Bo Nix didn't fall to us that Sean Payton had that as a flyer. Um, very curious to hear how you all would proceed with like developing Bo Nix, but making sure that we do have like a hedge if, if Bo Nix isn't who we think he is. Um, how do we also maybe develop Zach Wilson? Or do you just say we're all in on Bo because Bo knows football, Bo knows Denver, Bo knows Broncos. Broncos country, it's going to be an amazing run to the playoffs. I'm glad that you're all here for it. And Broncos country, let's giddy up. Kobe. Ah, more like, I should have said Jamal Murray when I shot that. <laughs>